Hello and greetings from Iceland, but uh, this video is dedicated to those of you who are here mainly because of my geology content, but I suspect that many of you will be interested in uh, what I'm going to say now. And to make it short, Iceland might be moving into very dangerous times due to a huge earthquake activity, more than we have ever seen before, but that is not the worst news. The worst news is that it is next door to the capital of Iceland, Reykjavik. I have spoken about it before, that the Reykjavik Peninsula has been behaving very strangely for the last 14 months. We have seen at least five lava intrusions. No one of them ended up with a volcanic eruption. And the earthquake activity has been huge. We had a 5.6 earthquake near the capital just four months ago. So the scientists believe that uh, the energy release back then would uh, keep the area relatively stable. The day before yesterday, we got a 5.7, followed off with a 4.6 and around uh, 4,000 uh, aftershocks. And uh, over 60 earthquakes were larger than 0.3, so we have never seen activity of this kind before. And we think that this is just the beginning. The whole peninsula is shaking, everything is on high alert, and what we fear most today is that uh, Reykjavik and the neighboring towns will be hit by earthquake up to 6.5. Earthquakes of that size come every 50 years. We had one in 1921, again in 1968, and the current earthquake swarm is just 5-10 kilometers away from this uh, mountain that is providing those huge earthquakes that can cause uh, major damage in Reykjavik and the greater capital area. And you can see on the map that everything is just going crazy just beside it. But I heard a geologist say today that uh, it is locked in the moment, but under pressure something could happen just anytime. But the earthquake risk is just uh, half of the story. Five lava intrusions in uh, 14 months are saying that uh, the region is getting ready for volcanic eruption. And if we move back to basics, Reykjavik is not built on an ideal spot. If Reykjavik were to be settled today with the knowledge we have about geology, we would have found another place for it. That's for sure. And that goes for Keflavik Airport as well, the Blue Lagoon, the power plants that are there. And overall, we can say that the Reykjanes Peninsula is the youngest part of Iceland. And it is the part where the Reykjanes uh, Ridge comes ashore. But Iceland is in fact just a part of this ridge that happens to be above sea level. And the Reykjanes Peninsula is very burnt area. It is just layer after layer after layer of lava. Young ground, still under construction. And the constructions on the Reykjanes Peninsula, they have a behavior pattern. We have 800 years with minor activity, like earthquakes and such, but the big events, they come every 800 years or so. And it so happens that it is around 800 years since we had the last major eruption there. And then to the biggest news and the worst news, scientists say that when this region is ready and the eruption starts, it's a period that can last for 200 years. 200 years of drifting plates with earthquakes and very frequent eruptions, very close to Reykjavik, perhaps as little as 20 kilometers. And that is literally so scary position that the Icelandic media isn't covering it uh, as they should, in my opinion, maybe not to scare people or something like that. But I am just repeating what scientists have been saying for the last 20 years, or the Reykjanes Peninsula is due for eruption. So we should not be surprised, but we are surprised. And I did not think that my generation would live through to see the surroundings around our capital be burning every few months. But everything points in that direction now. And many geologists are saying that this is just the beginning. We will have eruptions in the near future. Perhaps not in the next days or weeks, even months. But the Reykjanes Peninsula is building up for volcanic activity. That activity could be partially offshore, but most likely they will occur in the middle of the peninsula with uh, rows of craters that could span like 10 kilometers even longer. Where the ground opens up like a zipper, spits out the lava, closes up again, takes a break and starts again after a few months. 
we are very used to earthquakes and all kinds of uh, natural disasters in Iceland. We had to evacuate the whole town in 1973 in Vestmania and we did that overnight. But the capital area, that will not be evacuated overnight. There are major traffic problems there and the road infrastructure in the city can't even uh, get people to and from work in time. And in worst case scenario, that would be volcanic eruption close to the city with a whole lot of ash or perhaps poisoned gas and the wrong wind direction, that would leave us in grave danger. And the same goes for uh, Keplavik, the towns around uh, Keplavik International Airport. And one of the eruption sites, the possible eruption sites, is just in front of the north-south runway. And it makes it even more serious that about 80% of Icelanders are living in this part of the country. This is the most densely populated area in Iceland. This is the last place where we want to have volcanic eruption. Simple as that. So everything is on high alert now. The Civil Protection Agency has declared uh, official warnings on the whole peninsula and in the capital as well. The Blue Lagoon had to close after the 5.7 earthquake for the first time due to earthquakes. It is uh, very close to the epicenter of this uh, events. It's in the middle of a lava field and where lava has flowed, it can flow again. So those are really, really strange time here in Iceland. But when I started this channel, I decided to uh, dedicate a part of it to geology. Not because that I'm a geologist, nor am I an expert in this field, but I have always kept up with uh, what's going on in the country. And the reason is simple, I'm a photographer and I love to take pictures and videos of all kinds of formations that we have in, in our nature. And very often I want to know how this formation got there. Why is this mountain here? When did it come? What eruption? And such. Iceland is still in the making. That is what makes our nature so special. And I have gone many, many trips around this uh, region where this uh, earthquake swarm is now. And I absolutely love this place because it's just so wild, rough. And I even have a video online where they are comparing it to the landscape on Mars. And that is a video from NASA. And in this bit, I'm driving just uh, like five kilometers from the epicenter. And uh, when we look closely, it is just lava layer after layer after layer. Iceland's youngest part. So even if it looks all scary, it's also, it's strange to say, but it's also exciting in a way. Because uh, volcanic eruptions make such uh, good footage. And that is a part of my job, to sell footage. So, of course, I will be going south to Reykjavik if something happens. And like I promised in some of my first uh, videos about geology, when and if something happens, I will do my best to provide you with uh, some of the best footage. And to do so, I'm equipped with uh, extremely good zoom lenses because uh, it's hard to get uh, close sometimes. And I will also be equipped with a drone. So even if I'm excited about the possibility that I might uh, get uh, photos up just like this, I am uh, worried about how long is this going to go on. One or two eruptions in one, two years, that is no problem to handle. But to uh, spend decades and even centuries like the forecast with this next door to the capital is just something that is so frightening that uh, the Icelandic media is not ready to cover that story. They are covering very well what is going on today and yesterday and the day before. But they are very reluctant to go to the bigger picture or the words of the scientists who have said for 20 years when this region is ready, it's going to make a mess for 200 years. And I so hope that they are wrong. But in the moment, when I'm finalizing this video, Friday afternoon, this is the earthquake picture we are seeing. We thought the aftershocks were uh, decreasing, but then we got a 4.7 today and it's picking up again. And what we fear the most now is the 6.5, the threat of the 6.5 or 2 hitters now. Earthquakes in Iceland, they do not get larger than 0.7, maybe 7.12. But Iceland is a young country. The rock isn't as hard as in the older countries, so they give in from less tension. 
I'm currently in uh, North Iceland and there was an earthquake storm going on just north of me last summer. I felt the ground uh, shake beneath me many times and, uh, and we were afraid that the forecasted 0.7 earthquake was about to come. Because north of Iceland we have the Tjörnes uh, fracture zone and that zone is ready. There is enough built up tension there to uh, provide us with earthquake up to 0.7. So it is not just uh, Reykjanes Peninsula. Overall, 2020 was the biggest earthquake year we have ever seen on record. And the time lapse I just made and I'm linking to shows you that development from January 2020 to February 18th, just few days ago. So this is a situation pretty strange, I must say. And as I've always said, this is Iceland. We can expect anything. But it's uh, just a bit more than we expected now. So we hope for the best. We hope it's going to fade out and uh, we hope that uh, this isn't going to be as serious as it looks now. But I do, however, have the feeling that uh, before this tension under the country will come to rest, there will be some major events. Perhaps south of the country, perhaps north of the country, or maybe even on both places. And then we have the volcano under Vatnajökull, Grimsvöll, ready as well. The volcano Katla is due. It has been very peaceful there for 100 years. The volcano Hekla is also ready. And overall, it looks to me as we are going into a period of record-breaking activity, both in regards of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. So for those of you who are here for uh, scientific data as well, I'm providing you with a link to an interview with Mr. Paul Einarsson, where he goes in details over uh, the Reykjanes Peninsula and other links. And if you're a first-timer visiting, uh, please consider to subscribe, but uh, I will be updating uh, this section of my channel on a regular basis. And when I have the time, I'm trying to uh, pick out some uh, good documentaries and stuff that is already on YouTube and translated for English-speaking audience. And, uh, I have already translated some documentaries so you can so you can see them already and I hope you enjoy them but I am getting into the weekend and while I was reading this I was uh, checking the earthquake meters if something was uh, happening I feel it uh, from south uh, my friends are south that, that it's a lot of tension in there a lot of tension and this will be one strange weekend for many of us so if you want to see it in almost uh, Real time, the earthquakes here, I'm leaving links for that as well. And finally, I hope you enjoyed some of the footage that I was showing you from the Reykjanes Peninsula. And uh, let's hope that uh, my next uh, set of photos from there won't be just uh, glowing lava and such. And with that, I'm sending you all my best from the volcanic island Iceland and have a great weekend.